The scripture reading this morning is Colossians 3, verse 17. Colossians 3, 17. Whatever you do in word or deed, uh, do all in the name of our Lord Jesus, giving thanks through him to God the Father. Um, I guess I'll first apologize for being here in jeans and not school attire. I wanted to be here just as a guest today, uh, if that's possible. Um, I didn't really want to introduce my brother-in-law because of this. Um, I told people a while back when James uh, got his bachelor's degree, when he and Radonna started dating in this place, I thought, that can't be the one. (laughs) And that was 21 years ago that she made him officially the one. 21 years and almost a month. And uh, I don't admit being wrong very often. (laughs) But I could not have been more wrong. And I I take great pride in in my brother-in-law James and in his family. And uh, I'm really excited for you to be blessed by them. He wrote a biographical sketch, and I'll try to do those because maybe it'll control some emotion. But he he said while he and Radonna, that's Ray Donna, she's named after me. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, While they were taking a break from college, they met here as AIM students in August of 1990 and were married in this building in March of 93. They're proud parents of three beautiful children, Timothy, who's a freshman at West Texas A&M in Canyon and a uh, communications major, major, Kira, who's a junior at Seagraves High School, and Jay, who's a sixth grader at Seagraves Junior High. And they're members of the 12th Street Church family in Seagraves. Uh, he's also the minister there, but I really appreciate that he said we're members because they really are part of that uh, faith community and uh, preaching is a gift that God gave to James and to that church, but they're really strongly connected to that body. Uh, those that are on the top of his thankful list, uh, those things are purpose, Radonna, his kids, and his church family. Along the way, Radonna and James have served as apprentice missionaries in Dublin, Ireland. Uh, they served on the AIM staff here at Sunset uh, as youth and family ministry uh, in, in the youth and family ministry in Crosbyton as missionaries in Perm, Russia, and in ministry in Groover, Texas. And uh, James says 2000 was a pivotal year in their lives together, a year that began their work with the 12th Street Church in Seagraves, as well as they bought a little hole in the wall called the Seagraves Dixie Dog, which is a well-known restaurant uh, special to its community and the region and our family. Uh, Dixie Dog is now in its 60th year of operation, James is a graduate of SIBI and LCU. He uh, teaches business courses and relationship courses in the Seagraves Independent School District. Radonna attended LCU, uh, is a graduate of SIBI, and she manages the Seagraves Dixie Dogs day-to-day operations, corralling 12 employees, as well as managing their ever-busy home. Together they serve and are blessed daily by the 12th Street Church family. James, preach the word. About where Truett is setting is where I met Ray and Sonia. One morning in a chapel, kind of like this, and uh, it's been a fun ride. Um, I'm thankful for this place. I'm thankful for familiar faces. I'm thankful for new faces. Uh, that's, that's pretty neat. When I'm in this building, when I drive by this building, I'm reminded of a wonderful, merciful, beyond all imagination kind of God. Big G God. He blesses us with good people, wonderful opportunities. I'm reminded that God does what's best for His people when you drive down this street. Um, I'm not a building guy. I'm not a facility guy. But when it comes to this place, this is a special place because of what's gone on in here and out of here for decades. Um, I, I wanted to show the kids this morning um, where the payphone was down on the first floor. Uh, <laughs> but between a break and a break between... 
I believe it was Rex's Old Testament survey and, and uh, Ed's uh, evidences class in a break. I went to the payphone there on the first floor and I tracked down my dad. You didn't call people unless someone was dying or something in those days. Uh, I tracked him down at his job, which was an ordeal in itself. And I, he picked up the phone, are you okay? Are you okay? And I said, Dad, I found the one. And I got to get back to class. <laughs> and, <clears throat> and he said, the one what? And he knew what I was talking about. He said, you're not supposed to be finding the one there for a couple of years. I said, this is the best place to find the one. As I walked toward that this morning when we were visiting, I realized there was a defibrillator now where that, where that, payphone, where that payphone used to be. And um, that's a whole other set of jokes I can work on for the future. But um, time marches on, and um, now I'm connected with anybody on the planet with what's in my pocket. It's just, it's crazy what almost 25 years will do. We live in a, in a, a town called Seagraves, about an hour from here, runs an hour getting there, in, a, in Gaines County. And Gaines County, it's real interesting, there's an interesting demographic there. I've been on different continents, been in different cities, but now I live in a county that is a, a third Anglo, a third Hispanic descent, and a third Mennonite descent. And within that Hispanic descent, about half are, are folks that are going back and forth. Within that Mennonite descent, uh, most of those folks are Canadian or from Mexico or from Belize. And here I am thinking I got off the mission field. Uh, it's amazing. Folks, like, folks from those backgrounds and folks in West Texas understand what it's like to work, understand what it's like to have to have two or three things going on. Uh, to be able to live where you want to live or maintain your lifestyle or you know, have spiritual ends and goals, whatever that would be. And so it, it fits in nicely uh, as I had my head in a freezer at our restaurant a few, ni- a few weeks ago. Uh, I got an email, ding, from Charles Spear. And he said, would you mind coming and visiting with us about having a couple of different careers going on and the good things that are going on there? And I, I said yes. When he wrote that email, my mind went immediately back to the spring of 93, the year we were married. And on from that spring on to that year, Richard Rogers had a group on Friday mornings. We met about 6.30 uh, on Friday mornings down in, in one of the rooms in the basement. Uh, someone called it the wisdom of Richard in the morning, and uh, he didn't like that title, but it didn't stop him from sharing his wisdom. And I'm forever thankful for it. Uh, we studied and discussed an outline he had come up with. You know, he, if you all remember, he was on the clock at that time, and he was blessing folks and sharing folks and teaching uh, in all kinds of ways, in all kinds of creative ways. But he had an outline, and it was called Culturally Relevant Great Commission Churches Biblically Based for the 21st Century. We told him he needed to work on the title. And he said it was a working title. But in his title, as the wordsmith he was, he laid out exactly what we wanted to be a part of. And I, it was awesome. One day he said something that shook me, shook us, and every, every time he shook us with something, but this day in particular, as I thought that night reading that email a few weeks ago, gentlemen, the best thing you can do as you go to work with a church or plant a new church is this, hang out your shingle, do something, make something, run something in which you can support yourself. It will then be where you can find your ministry in the kingdom. He was telling us that at some point we need to be able to support ourselves, uh, be able to have a job, uh, make some tents <laughs> even. And, and I thought it was the fruitiest, not fruitful, I thought it was the fruitiest thing he could say. Because I was there, see I was looking at it through me, I was there wanting to be this full-time minister, give my all, be fruitful, and not waste time doing other things. I had the view that I would be something less if I was less than a full-time minister, missionary, or church planner. I realized something the more I thought about it. I was getting ministry mixed up with clergy. And we can't do that. Whatever, whatever our role is. And I was limiting myself. I was limiting God. And so as Redon and I talked about it later that spring and on into that year, we just filed it away in the back of our minds, in the back of our hearts, and that, that someday, you know, God may lead us to do something else uh, in addition to the things we wanted to do ministry-wise, it, because at that point he was leading us to Eastern Europe, specifically to Russia, then back to Texas. And then ironically enough, he led us, and I remember the conversation. We were on the phone with each other. He led us to a tent-making opportunity. We didn't know how blessed we would be. We did not know at the time. 
In Acts 18, Paul had left Athens. Now, I'll give you this. 17 is my favorite chapter in my favorite book of Acts. But it leads into Acts chapter 18. And Paul leaves Athens and goes to Corinth. He meets Aquila and Priscilla. And their lives, along with the lives of anyone connected with the Corinthian church or later the Ephesian church, none of their lives will ever be the same. They had something in common. He had something in common with Priscilla and Aquila. They were being led by God to that place for that time. They worked together. Specifically, they made tents. They made a living while they shared their lives together. You you know He blessed them. You know He discipled them. He worked with them, probably comforted them too because they'd been run out of Rome. He taught in the synagogues. And later when when Timothy and Silas catch up, they begin to preach exclusively to the Jews. It's as if Paul's just giving it one more shot. I'm going to give it one more shot and preach specifically to the Jews, to his own countrymen, to his own background. And it didn't go well. Paul moves on. Next door. Folks are saved. Church established. Training program in the works. A reminder that God has called people out. Uh, waiting to, God has called people out. God is, is putting people in their life waiting on Him to speak to them. Outlines for training programs 2,000 years later come up. Paul sends Priscilla and Aquila to Ephesus while he heads to Syria. Apollos comes on the scene. They bless him. They give him more direction. Remember, they gave purpose and they gave completion to his knowledge and to his fervor. And he runs into a group when Paul comes back into town, when Paul comes to Ephesus. He runs into a group that I believe was initially taught by Apollos. They were on fire. They wanted to do their best for Jesus. They wanted to, they wanted to share their lives with others, but they, their knowledge and their information was incomplete. After spending some time with Paul, they're baptized, they're commissioned. The Ephesian church is established. Paul took time. Paul blessed people. In the course of the 45 seconds it took me to tell that story, Paul establishes the Corinthian church. Paul establishes the Ephesian church. Paul took time. Paul supported himself. And as a result, in all the province of Asia, no matter the culture, Jew or Gentile, everyone, everyone heard the word. He hung out a shingle. He had been bivocational. He was dual career. You might hit a point in your ministry as you go out from this special place. You might hit a point in your ministry where you might be waiting on a visa. You might stay, want to stay in a community. You may want to move to an area of the country where church funding, church financing for your work may not be completely available. You might have an opportunity to reach into a smaller community through working through a school or owning a business. or You might want to do something, nothing wrong with this. You might want to do something to increase your own finances to bless the kingdom. You might just want to break from paid ministry. I don't know what your circumstances may be, but let me tell you this. If you're in full-time church finance paid ministry, or if you're in a self-supported ministry, or a hybrid of both, listen to me closely. You're a disciple of Jesus. You're a follower of Jesus. Your family will be a blessing to whoever they come into contact with. We are, you are commissioned. You are purposed. Don't let a title or love of a title or lack of a title get in the way of doing something for the kingdom when the opportunity arises. Now, I do want to tell you something, a few things about a dual career ministry. And I'm not talking about having a job and then kind of helping out at church. I mean, when you're helping lead or leading your congregation while you're doing something else to support yourself financially, I want to share a couple of things that um, list of innumerable list of things. I want to share a couple. It is exciting. You're never bored. You're never bored. I don't know if that's a good thing or not. I'm, I'm a fan of boredom at times, but you're never bored. You will have something going on all the time. Yesterday, in the course of a few hours, I went from school to working at our restaurant, I had to make a list here, to a family meal with guests, to a family who's uh, from church who's hurting, uh, to a softball game, to a study time, to an economic development board meeting, to a distributor ordering, to Redonna time, to kid time, and I had to get Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. in because it was Tuesday night. Okay? 
because it ties in with Captain America from last week. And I didn't get to it until about 11, but I didn't, I didn't look at Facebook. I didn't look at anything. Now, that was four and a half hours. And it was all a blessing. Never bored. It's exciting. It's exciting. Now, to follow up, dual career ministry can be exhausting. It really can. But it's a good kind of tired. You know the difference? A good kind of tired and a tired... Most nights are a few hours sleep, but we're thankful for those few hours. But here's the blessing in that good kind of exhaustion. You will learn to draw strength from the Lord. You will learn that I can't rely on myself. You can't rely on yourself. You will learn to draw strength from from your Lord, from your spouse, from your kids. They are in your life for a blessing. They will give you great joy. They'll keep you awake. Sometimes they'll fail, but they'll keep you awake. You learn to draw strength from His people. It will take some time to understand that because we're wired to give. That's a good thing. We're wired to give and give and give. But there will come a point in time in in your ministry, whether it's a full-time church finance ministry or whether it's a dual career ministry, we will learn eventually to accept the gift that comes with being a part of the body to accept the gift that comes of, of, of rest and renewal. God's real creative with how He gives us rest and renewal. He's good like that. We will be blessed by God and His people when we give up relying on our own strength and begin to rely on Him and the gifts that He gives. Here's a bonus. A good, in a good exhaustion, you begin to understand that your church members are on the go all the time. And if you challenge them on being too busy, God will use them to give you the challenge right back. Ray mentioned, and rightly so, that we are, I, I can't begin to describe our church family. It, it helps when we went there and we moved there that Radonna was from there. Our church in some ways is exactly the same as it was when we moved there. And in some ways, it's completely radically different. And it, it's a blessing. When your elders are the elders like I have, when your deacons are the deacons like we have, when your members are... Anyway, I can't... I, if I start talking about 12th Street, I will, I'll, I'll cry. <laughs> I'll cry. Because they're such a blessing. God will use your church family. To help renew them, Um, America West, U.S. Air, uh, American Airlines that have now combined to be the new American, the largest airline in the world, Um, if they can ever get their act together. (laughs) Kent's doing his job. We're not worried about that. We're just worried about those guys up in the main office. We're, we're thankful that uh, Kent is here this morning. He's here to make a special presentation to us. In addition to flying around the country and around the world, Kent serves as an elder of the Sun Valley Congregation in uh, the Phoenix area, actually in Gilbert, Arizona. And um, the preacher there um, is a graduate of, of this school. His name is Terry Bruff. His wife is Sandra. They graduated in 1982, and he's been at that congregation for 10 years. This is a great partner church for us. Uh, They love this place. We love them. And several of us have been out there uh, across these 10 years several times, and we've had the opportunity to meet some wonderful people out there. And Kent and his wife and children are among those people. You remember back last year, we started uh, down the road of developing a solar event. We, we started uh, loading material on our little uh, solar audio players, and, and we're going to send those to Africa. And, and um, when I was out there back in October in, uh, at the Sun Valley Congregation, uh, I had occasion to sit down with the elders and show them this little device and, 
We didn't have all of the stuff on it that was going to be on it that's on it today. But I showed this to them, and I was so amazed because one of the elders there immediately caught the vision. I mean, he got so excited about it, and he's sitting here among us today. And he has been the guy that has... Thank you, James. Awesome. That inspired me. Hello, Don. Watching via telecast in Gilbert, Arizona. 7 a.m.-ish. I won't take up too much more of your time. Um, Truett, as he said, came out, introduced us to this solar device. And... I've been around a long time. There is very few times in my life where I recognize something so powerful, something that is so potent in its potential to change the world. When I saw this device, I saw something so important I can't put into words. This is the, I feel in my personal Vision, this is more important than the word being put into the English language, written by the Guggen, what is it, the Guggenheim Press. I think this is on that level of importance for the church. Truett came out and introduced us to this and asked Sun Valley to be partners with Sunset in this vision to spread the gospel to Africa. He gave me a package. It was a blueprint. I I didn't do anything. I just followed the script. But I was excited, passionate about spreading the gospel. That excitement spread throughout our congregation. I made the announcements. I didn't hear a a whole lot of feedback. People wanted to see the device. They played with it. March 30th, we took up a collection on one Sunday of a congregation of about 400 people. I had to ask for forgiveness because my faith was a mustard seed. With the faith of a mustard seed, what can we do? We can move mountains. And this envelope surpassed my faith. Our congregation rose to the calling of sunset rose to the calling of the eldership at Sun Valley. In one collection, we raised $25,000 from a membership of 400. Young preachers, elders, deacons, church leadership, when you are dreaming dreams, dream no small dream. They inspire not the hearts of men. Opportunity is a visitor. Assume that she will not be here tomorrow. This is an opportunity of a lifetime. Please spread this news as you are. I am honored on behalf of Sun Valley Church of Christ to present this check to Sunset and to Truett Adair for the great opportunity that he has allowed Sun Valley to spread this news to the world. And we want to be part of phase one, phase two, phase 15. (laughs) Amen, brother. Thank you. Stay here, Kent. We're going to have a prayer. let's, Let's have a prayer and thank God for this. Father, we're so grateful to you for Kent and for his enthusiasm uh, that obviously has been contagious. We're thankful you will hear the word because of of people like uh, this great congregation at Sun Valley in Gilbert, Arizona. We bless you, our Father. We thank you for all of your blessings in our lives. In the name of Jesus, amen. Amen. Amen.